Hello, today we're going to take a look at the 737-700 here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and more importantly we're going to have a look at ILS or the Instrument Landing System. So before we get started, I'm not going to program a flight plan, I've got the aeroplane just sat here on the runway, powered up, ready to go. So yes, I'm not going to program anything in the FMC, we're just going to fly it by hand all the way around. So if we go and have a look at Little Nav Map, we can see we've got an airfield here, Montgomery Regional. We're sat on runway 10 at Montgomery Regional. Now you will look on this end of the runway, leading into runway 10, there is a big green triangle on the map. This is what's known as the ILS feather. So when, the, when you're navigating towards the airfield, you will aim to get your aeroplane into this feather and you ideally need to be about 2,500 feet. So a, a, a normal ILS beam, because it's projected from the ground out, you know, away from the runway, is at three degrees above the ground level. Yeah, so by the time you get to the end of the feather, we can measure it to show you how far that is. Measure distance from that position and it's about seven, seven and a half miles-ish, but it's going to be about two and a half thousand feet you need to be at when you get there. So when we're coming in to join, you know, to do an ILS approach, we need to come in from before the feather at two and a half thousand feet or thereabouts. And you also need to have the nav radios tuned in to the frequency of the ILS for that runway, which in this case is 109.90. And we also need to change the course on the... Um, the master control panel to the direction of the runway which in this case is or the direction of the ILS which is 97 degrees it don't take it as red that the ILS will be in the same direction as the runway they quite often differ a small amount sometimes they differ an enormous amount okay so we need to remember 109.90 and 97 degrees so let's go and have a look so here are the nav radios in the 737 so we want 109.90. So to tune a nav radio, you roll the lower knob to get the integers. So 109, and there's 90 is already there. And to transfer it, all we've done is change the standby frequency. This is the one that's actually being used by the aircraft. We can transfer, and it swaps the two numbers over. So we need to do the same on the other one. This will become obvious why later. 109.90 and swap it over so the standby becomes the active and the active becomes the standby. Okay, so normally when you're navigating with um, uh, the GPS, you would program your route into the flight management computer and it would appear on here as a, a track through the sky to follow. We're not going to be doing that today. We're going to turn this knob up here that changes the mode of the EFIS screen to approach mode and what that gives us is a course deviation indicator here and a vertical position relative to or glide slope indicator relative to the the glide slope of the ILS these are replicated broadly over here so you get a diamond along the bottom of the attitude indicator and you get another diamond that will appear on the side of the attitude indicator so that they show you your position relative to the glide slope, the invisible line through the sky down to the runway. So a position across our, you know, ac across the um, airspace, or the, our lateral position, you might say, and our vertical position relative to the glide slope. Okay, so let's get let's take off. We'll fly a circuit and we'll weave around on the approach, and we'll see these diamonds moving, and we'll see this move. Now it's worth pointing out this works exactly the same as VORs but obviously we've changed the course to the runway direction. So we can spin this around. Yeah. But we need to make it the same direction as the runway. Otherwise it will be very difficult to think about what's going on. So we want 97 or the same as the, um, the glide slope. 97 degrees. And the same on the other one. 97 degrees. There we go. So the nav radios are tuned in and the courses are tuned in. We're not going to be using autopilot, as I said. Okay, so let's race off down the runway. So we'll just check parking brake is off. Flaps are at 
15, de uh, sorry, 5 degrees, which is perfect. I haven't trimmed us out yet. So typically, with the default configuration the aeroplane will arrive on the runway with in Flight Simulator for the PMDG 737, you need about 5.8, 5.9 on the trim. So we're just going to spin that around until it's in the ballpark. So that's probably enough. And the reason for trimming the aircraft, if you do a full workup on the flight management computer, it tells you the trim level. But the reason for doing it. Shall we get rid of the ATC out of our way? So all we need to do is detune the comm radio and switch frequencies, and we don't get annoyed by ATC anymore. Okay, I forgot what I was going to say before she butted in there, but... Ah, okay. I hadn't released the parking brake, and I now have. So we got a warning straight away as soon as we revved the engines up. So I'm not going to go to maximum revs, I'm going to go to the high 90s on the N1 number over here. So we're having to use a little bit of side stick or side pressure to... Um, hold the aircraft straight on the runway because there is a crosswind today so we're going to come through our rotate speed so we're going to completely manual today Positive climb. gear up and flaps up one position and again, notice we're not getting any markers on the indicated airspeed ribbon of when to do things. And that's because we haven't programmed a flight plan. The, um, the, sh the aircraft doesn't know anything about our weight or, you know, the loadout of the aircraft at all. Interesting, the auto throttle came on all on its own. We're going to disable that. OK, so we're going to make a right turn now. And we're going to fly the opposite direction than the runway. I'm going to put the flaps back down a little bit. So we're referencing the vertical speed here. And we're referencing our indicated airspeed. And we're referencing our direction we're travelling, which is the compass rows, obviously. And the attitude indicator. So we're just going to end up about two and a half thousand feet, so the nose can come down a bit. And we want to be about 280 degrees to fly the opposite direction than the runway. And when we turn back towards the runway, we'll be able to talk about the this instrumentation and what it really means. It won't make much sense until we turn back towards the runway. of some of these things that are flashing. We've got a warning that we've switched off the auto throttle. That's absolutely fine. Yes, we meant to do that. Okay, so we're now flying the opposite direction than the wrong way. We've gone a little bit higher than we intended, but we can lose that altitude easily. I'm just going to trim the aircraft out so I'm not having to hold pressure on the stick while we're flying along. That's perfect. OK, so if we have a look at little nav map, we can see we took off, we accelerated around the turn, and now we're flying the opposite direction than the runway, and we'll fly out to the end of the feathers and aim to come in at about 2,500 feet. And then we'll be able to see what this course deviation indicator means and what these diamonds do. Notice we haven't got a vertical diamond yet. When we turn back around, it will appear. We just trimmed out the aircraft flying along in a stable manner. There's no autopilot or anything. So we can trim a little bit now and again. If you listen to professional pilots, they will warn you against micro kind of trimming the aircraft. So don't try and fly the aeroplane with trim. OK, 
Okay. So we're making our way back slowly. We've got a caution that's come on. Why would that be? Just ignore it. So we're going to do this twice. We'll do once with a manual approach and I'll wiggle all over the place to show you the instrument instrumentation changing and then we'll come back in and we'll do a full auto land just to illustrate how that works. So where are we on the map now? We're coming up towards the end of the feathers, we're starting to turn gently. That's the wind. What's happening there? The reason our nose is going right. Notice the wind is coming from our right. So it's hitting the tail plane and pushing it left. So if our, if our tail is pushed left, our nose goes right. So the plane is slowly weathercocking into the wind. And the reason for that, of course, is look at the size of the tail plane. Okay, so we're slowly descending, actually. We need to climb a little bit. But it's fine. Okay, we're going to turn back towards the airfield. Now, if we do this by looking at the instruments, what we'll do is we're turning, we're looking at the vertical speed to maintain the same sort of altitude we've been on. The compass is rotating, so we're just looking at the artificial horizon, the vertical speed, the indicated airspeed, and looking at the compass as we turn. So what we're aiming to do is line this line up with the gap here. So at the moment it's telling us that we are to the right of the runway. We're getting a bit low, so I'm just going to raise the nose up again. I'm trying to turn quite tightly so that we don't line up exactly right. I'd like, to be us, off, I'd like us to be offset if I possibly can. So we're coming round towards 100 degrees, which is the same direction as the runway. And the reason I'm not looking up is because I want you to prove to you what's going on. Right, we're at 2,500 feet, which is perfect. So, we're going straight towards the runway, except we're not. This line is to the left of us, which means we are off to the right of the line down to the runway. So what we need to do is dogleg across. If we look on the map, we can see that. See, we're off to the, to the right of the line. So we're going to dogleg across. And when we do that, we don't have to keep turning. We just pull a slight angle. Notice this line is coming in now. And that corresponds with the diamond here. It's coming in. Just going to level us up so we don't descend anymore. So the diamond's coming in. But remember, we're travelling at an angle to the runway, so we need to start turning back towards the same direction as the runway. So we do that now. And now, if we look up now, we should find, directly in front of us, there's the runway. Okay? So, the vertical line, what does that diamond mean? If you imagine there's an invisible line down to the runway that climbs at three degrees away from the runway and gets higher and higher the further away you get. So that diamond represents where we are in position in association with that line or so at the moment we're saying we are above where we should be. So I'm going to pull the throttles back because obviously we're going downhill we're accelerating. I am going to have to put the gear down at some point so I'm going to have to put the air brakes out. I'm playing with the flaps as well. So you can see, look, we're descending towards that line. So that's the warning that we haven't got the gear down. So I'm just going to put the gear down to excuse the noise for a moment. So we're slightly high according to the glide slope. So we're rotating the nose back up and we're trying to balance that line down to the ground. The gear will lock out in a moment and the noise will go away. There it goes. It takes the gear a while to travel. 
So there we go. And if you do it perfectly, you'll hit the wheels on the markers on the runway. So there we go, we're down. So we're going to accelerate again. So let's centre our view up. So full thrust again. And rotate. And gear up. So we're going to go back out again. And we're going to come in on the full auto land with the ILS just to show you how it's done. So all you're really doing is looking at your lateral position relative to the runway, which is easier to see here, and your vertical position relative to the glide slope, which is the invisible line down to the runway. So let's turn around back to 280 degrees. And this time we're going to switch the autopilot on in the correct mode to land. So we're going to start getting things ready on the master control panel for that to happen. So we're climbing gently as we come around this corner and we're slowly accelerating out. There's no hurry. So we're going to get approach mode ready. Is it going to let us actually? Oh, we haven't switched the flight directors on. There are two parts to an autopilot. There's the actual autopilot that controls the aircraft and there's also the flight directors. So there's two systems really. One is figuring out what to do with the aeroplane and that's the flight director. The other one is just doing what it's being told which is the autopilot. Okay, so we're coming around to 280 degrees. We'll just focus on that for a moment before we start playing with buttons. And we've come up, we've gone a little bit high, so we'll just level out and come off the speed a little bit. So at this point, we can start playing with some of these controls. So you have the auto throttle here. Say if we wanted to be doing 180 knots and we turn on the auto throttle. And we go to speed mode the throttle starts moving all on its own so we don't need to touch the throttle anymore and say we were wanting to be at 2500 feet we can change the altitude so we're only at 1700 feet at the moment which I kind of did on purpose so you get to see this 2500 feet is now dialed in now we have to tell it how to get there so we'll go for vertical speed mode and we say you roll the wheel next to it and so see we'll climb up at a thousand feet a minute and then we engage the autopilot and give it a chance to correct its trim it's quite slow at reacting you're not really supposed to play with it this low there we go it's catching up now so I held it on the stick there until it had caught up with itself so we can say get us back up there at 2,000 feet a minute. Ignore the caution. Notice, notice we're going the wrong direction because we were busy focusing on that. We weren't focusing on the direction we're going so we're good to heading select mode and that's going to be wildly outlook because we want to be going 280. So we'll spin this round and you can see the, the required direction of travel changing so we want the opposite direction than the course so we'll go a little bit more this is quite good that we're getting angles all over the place because then you get some appreciation of seeing the symbology appearing so the plane is climbing back out to 2500 feet so th this is a good illustration the autopilot can't work wonders it's slow at responding it won't save you if in doubt, if you're in trouble, you can't switch the autopil autopilot on and expect it to work wonders. You're better off going to fully manual and disengaging the throttle and the autopilot and doing it yourself and then re-engage it when you're ready to use it. Okay, let's uh, see where we are. So we'll fly off round in a loop and come back in. And 
and then you'll get an opportunity to see the auto land in operation so this is where it becomes important that we've configured things you can't use auto land if you haven't got both nav radios tuned to the ILS if you've only got one of them it's called single channel mode if you've got both you've got what's called dual channel mode so on one nav radio you can use approach mode which is the APP button over here yeah and that means that the plane will fly itself down the glide slope to the runway if you've got both nav radios tuned in you still use approach mode but it changes on the way down and goes to dual channel mode and then goes to flare mode and we'll see all that happen on the way so we're still only doing 180 knots so we can actually drop the gear it's not going to make any difference how far away are we now okay we're going to make the turn so we're going to manually spin ourselves back round to 110 degrees we could tighten the turn a little bit by coming down to 170 knots. Now you need to be wary if you're using selected heading mode. If you go beyond 180 degrees of the direction you're facing, the plane will start turning the opposite direction because it will take the shortest route to the, the heading you have chosen. So we actually want 97 degrees, don't we, on the heading. So let's see how that's doing. So we're turning in towards the runway. The reason I've come out all this way, I want to illustrate something else to you. You can't use approach mode if you are above the ILS beam. You have to come in from below it. So if you imagine the beam is coming up from the runway, just wait for this turn to finish until we can see the runway then I can kind of draw a line with the mouse in the sky to illustrate this okay we're coming around so we're off to one side yeah you can see we're not if we look on the map we're off to one side so if we go and engage approach mode now, and take off he heading select, the aircraft should start turning towards the runway. Is it going to? We have to have VOR lock on as well. No, nope, just approach mode should be good. There we go, it's starting to roll very gently because it hasn't got to correct by a lot. And you will notice now, oh, it may, it may be it's not going to capture because we have not got the diamonds lit up. So what we're going to do is fly the aircraft across ourselves until the that Yeah, we have to get the diamonds lit up before we can do it. So that's another really good point that I'd forgotten all about. Okay, they're both lit up so let's go for approach mode now there we go it's captured it single channel at the moment if I turn on both autopilots it will take a while to happen because there was a delay associated with it capturing it remember we can also start s slowing down and we can watch the magic happen. 
So did you notice there, there was quite a delay associated with switching on approach mode and it capturing the ILS beam. Get rid of the warning again. Slow down even further. So did you notice as well on the display here, it's now saying flare. So we've switched on both autopilots. You can only do that when you've got approach mode activated. And it's actually, look, it's switched off. So it's, it's switched over from approach mode, it's on auto land. That's why, where flare has appeared. So something else you might want to have a look at if you're using this mode is there is a knob under here that says auto brake. So we can turn it up to max and the aircraft will stop itself. So I'm not touching any controls. So we'll just watch what happens. Well, actually, should we watch from outside? Because it's an opportunity to do this. As soon as it lands, I will go inside the cockpit. So we need to steer to get ourselves on the centre line. We could always use um, thrust reversers if we want as well. You can hear them. you've slowed down you can raise the flaps and slowly roll off the runway so there you go we've looked today at a manual ILS approach and we obviously we weaved all over the place to see the symbology changing and then you saw some of the problems that you have to conquer in terms of using a full-on ILS approach with auto land so in order to capture the glide slope you have to have these diamonds lit up with solid and not hollow we saw that happen and I'd forgotten completely about that because normally you, you, you are in the neighbourhood when you enable it and I did it offset on purpose to try and make the aircraft skew itself back towards the runway but I'd forgotten you have to have what's called a capture of the beam for that to work. So there we go. I think that's probably enough for today isn't it? So there you go. The PMDG 737-700 in Flight Simulator. We've been looking at ILS. I'll see you again soon.